Hello everybody and welcome back to Waffles RC. As you can see we have a few projects going but the one that we're going to focus on today is this one. That one is the Bronco. That needs a new motor and a few other parts just waiting on them to show up. But this one is the Toyota that you guys have seen in many videos. So what I'm going to do with this one in this video is for people who don't have access to welders or don't know how to weld, I'm going to take this one apart and show you piece by piece what you need to order off of the internet. So that way you can make your own RC crawler and just piece it together and it literally will all just bolt together. I had to make a few parts, but that's because I didn't feel like spending the money on the other parts. And by making the parts, I mean like my rusty battery tray. But everything else was bought and just bolts right together. So I'll take it apart and it's going to explode into parts. And you'll see it here in three, two, one. And there you go. Completely torn apart. And come to find out, as I took this thing apart, I found I should have done a nut and bolt check on this thing. Because it's missing half of the hardware or some of it's loose or anything like that. So... We are going to learn from my mistakes and put this all back together the correct way and tighten every single bolt and Loctite where necessary. I also wanted to go through each part individually and tell you where I got them. Well, I got everything off of Amazon. I'm going to attempt to add some links in the description below for all the parts that I got or all the parts that are laying right here. So that way anybody who wants to piece one of these things together that they can follow the link in the description. It'll take you right to the part that I'm showing you right here. To start, you're going to need frame rails. Now these frame rails are for an SCX-10 II. Got them for, I think, $21 and it comes with two frame rails, just like that, minus the body post mount. I didn't take that off because I forgot to. Next thing you're going to need center skid plate or transmission mount. So I chose this one. It's for the SCX-10 too. It's a different style. I like it because for the control arm mounts, it has different positions. So you can either make the wheelbase shorter or longer. It all depends on the wheelbase that you're gonna get. When you're getting one of these, you wanna make sure that it has the right mounting holes for the particular transmission, or in this one's case, transfer case, that the bolt holes will line up correctly with that skid plate. What I mean by the correct holes for the transmission or transfer case that you're going to be getting is you see how on this transfer case, bolt holes are offset and they're at different sides, or sorry, they're at different widths and they're off to one side. This has the correct ones. You can mount that transfer case on the other side, you can mount it on either direction of this particular skid plate. Now, this one is the same, essentially, as most of this. It is the same, same frame rails, it's just red. But this one has a three gear axial style transmission. It's not a separate transmission and transfer case like this one is. So this one, if you look in comparison, this particular skid plate, the transmission, I was just pointing at my phone thinking that you guys could see where I'm pointing on my phone. I'm doing it again. Anyhow, as you see, this particular skid plate, you can only put the transmission on one side. So those are things to look out for when you're buying the skid plates. You want to make sure you get the right one for the transmission you're going to get. So the other reason why I like this particular skid plate is because these pieces right here where the control arms mount, these unbolt from the skid plate, which is very nice for when you're doing your own, you're building your own custom RC. So I bought another one of these skid plates, took the control arm mounts off and put them on here. So this is my Cadillac Escalade project that I I'm going to be getting back on and I'll be showing you guys how I do this one too. But we'll get to that when we get to that. AKA when I get money. Because I need more parts. 
So another important thing when you're buying these or buying this kit, you want to know what your wheelbase is going to be. So it depends on your body. So this one is a 313 millimeter or 12.3 inch wheelbase center to center. These frame rails are able to support either a 313 or longer or whatever wheelbase you have. There's lots of holes here in the back or you can just drill new holes. But this video is more for the people that don't have those kinds of tools. Just have a couple Allens, put this all together. So that's what this is all about. So once you know your wheelbase, then you want to get your control arms. Make sure you can see it. Yeah. So then you want to get your control arms. I got these ones, pretty cheap. They are specifically for a 313 millimeter wheelbase, front and rear. It came with eight pieces. I only used seven. I'll get to the front ones eventually and tell you all about that. But these ones, really no adjusting was necessary. It just bolted right in here, or right into the skid plate, and was able to bolt it all together. All right, let's backtrack for a second. A couple other things, hey, you stay. A couple other things you're gonna need to complete the frame will be a rear strut brace, or whatever you wanna call it. It's a brace that goes in between the rear shock towers. So that just kinda helps tie everything together back here. Also, I did on this one do a rear bumper mount, because I, made bumpers for this thing. I lost the front one. So it's somewhere down in the creek. I have no idea, but I'll make another one. So you'll need those to tie the frame together, the skid plate or the transmission mount. That's what you would look up online. You'd look up a transmission mount. This ties in the center and on the front. I didn't feel like I'm wiring stuff. On the front, we have a front bumper mount, which is also the servo mount for the steering for this particular RC. Those pieces, rear bumper mount, front bumper mount, rear strut brace, and the center transmission mount, all of those tie the frame together. So we'll put it all together. I'll leave this off for now, but we'll put all of this together. There's a frame with the transmission mount and the rear bumper. So the next thing, is shock towers. These are what the shocks mount to and for the rears those actually hold that center brace in there or the rear brace for the rear shocks. These shock towers you can get them in all sorts of different colors, sizes, styles. These ones I got the pack of four of them and they're all designed once again for the SEX 10 2. So we'll put the rears on because the fronts are a little more complicated because of the particular transmission mount that I chose. There it is with the rear shock towers all mounted up. That rear cross member is in there, rear bumper. So essentially for the frame, everything on the rear is done. Now they do make a battery tray that fits in here. It, I didn't go with that one, particularly because of the body that I chose. And you'll see later on, I cut the bed out to have these poke through, so that's why my body mounts are way down here. So I wanted the body to sit lower down on the frame because I did some very long shocks. Also want to state, another good investment to get is a box of this M3 hardware. They have it in black, they have it in the stainless, all the different sizes, washers, nuts. It's all very good stuff to get when you're piecing one of these things together. Also, you want to get a box. I don't know if you can see them. It's just a box of lock nuts. M3. Most of this thing gets put together with M3 hardware. So those are two very good things to get. So on the axle front, these are AR44-ish. They are not actually axial AR44s, but they are metal. These things have been holding up really well. But the good thing about putting one of these together is that you can choose whatever axles that you want. This one has very different axles. These are basically like an axial Capra. That's the style that they are. This one that you guys saw me build, these axles are basically the AR45s, which are the SEX 103. 
that monstrosity. That's not even in the camera. This one has AR-60s basically off of the axial rift. Once again, none of these parts are actually axial parts. They are all knockoff, but they are affordable and they're very good quality for the ones that I've found. So you can choose whatever axles you want to run. You can run the AR-45s, gives it more of a scale look width-wise. They're not a super wide axle. They're wide enough for, you know, the body that's on it. So that's why I went with them, because I just checked the measurements online to make sure I had the body already. So I went with these axles because they were the right width for the look and profile and everything that I was trying to go for with this truck. So let's get these axles mounted up, and we'll be right back. So here it is with the rear axle on. The rear axle setup is a triangulated four link setup. And it just moves around, you know, just like that. And as you can see, the upper links are mounted right here on the frame. Lower links are mounted there. And I have them on the middle hole because that's where the pinion angle is really good for this one. All right, so there's a better angle of the control arms being mounted on there. So that's the rear. So now we'll get rear coils on there, coilovers, shocks, whatever anybody wants to call them. So these are the coilovers that I went with. They're 110 millimeter coilovers. I like to have a lot of travel, so I have very tall shocks, coilovers. Oh, the terminology just doesn't make sense. I know they're coilovers, but it's a toy car, they're shocks. Anyhow, I have these four, got them pretty cheap. I don't have oil in them. Pretty sure that that one's bent, but who knows? It still works, so. Except for when you drop it, then it doesn't. So, still works. This truck has been quite abused and has had very little maintenance, so that's why we're doing this, is I needed to do some maintenance on it, and I figured I'd take the whole thing apart and show everybody how you can piece one of these things together. So let's get these rear coilovers mounted up. On that note, actually, another good thing to invest in would be these little plastic spacers. So those I have mounted, oops, sorry, on the top part of the coilover up here onto the shock tower to space it out because as you can see, the mounting surface for the top of the coilover is pretty far inset and I have them up pretty high. These little plastic spacers help me space the coilover further out so it doesn't hit the shock tower. And there are the rear coilovers all mounted up. Everything works. So that's pretty much everything you need to get the rear all together. Once again, these body mounts are here because of how I have the body that I picked for this frame set up. That's where I was able to get them to work, so that's where they are. Normally, body posts mount in here, and then you adjust it for the height depending on which body you go with, or however you want to do it. So now, with these coilovers, like I said, I did 110 millimeters. You don't have to do these. You can do longer. You can go 120s. That's what that has, and that. That has 130s, but look at it. You can do whatever length coilover you want to do. One thing you guys will learn about me is that I'm not overly picky about other people's builds. However they want to build them is how they want to build them. And they should build them, and that's all that matters. The good thing about these shock towers, too, this stupid camera, whatever the focus, it's not a camera, it's a phone. So, as you can see in here, or right there, these shock towers make it so you can run whatever shocks or coilovers, whatever length you want to do, or for whatever height you want to do. If I wanted to make this truck taller, I could just move it down two holes. This thing would be a monster truck, minus the little tires. Luckily, all these parts make it so that you can make this thing exactly how you want to make it. And however you want to make it is the best way to make it. All right, and now it's for the most controversial part of the RC hobby that I have seen so far. I think it's hilarious. This is the motor that I chose to go with, which is a Spectrum 2-in-1 ESC motor, all that fun stuff. 
That's the motor I went with, and I also chose to go with a forward mount transmission, which basically puts the motor and the transmission up at the front. Get my arm out of the way. Puts it up at the front of the frame, putting more weight on the front, which helps you go up hills. Center mount transmissions, that gets more weight here in the middle, and then you can put the batteries in the front, which I have that one set up. It's got the transmission there in the center, and I have the battery mounted in the front. That just gets more weight on the front end of it. So once again, whatever motor or transmission or whatever, whatever you want to run, you run it. doesn't matter what other people think. The whole point of these things is to have fun. I've had good luck with this transmission and I've had very good luck with Spectrum Motors. So I'm gonna keep going with it until I have an issue and then I'll move on. But as you can tell, not exactly, well, that's just a mess. But as you can tell by all the other vehicles that I have, not all of them are built exactly the same. That has a three gear transmission, three gear transmission, three gear transmission with two speed and a dig front mount, front mount, front mount. It's just what's worked for me and it's whatever works for the build that I'm trying to build. You get it. I know there's a lot of people that don't like the Spectrum stuff and you know what? That is perfectly fine. I can afford that. So I'm going to run that and it's waterproof. As you've seen in the videos, I like to play in water. So I'm going to go with the waterproof stuff. So this particular forward mount transmission sits inside of the frame rails here with these bars right here that need to tighten up. Sits in there and gets held down by shock towers for the front shocks. So I'll put that together and come back and show you where it's at. Oh, and I can't believe I skipped over the other controversial thing. Servos. So this is the front bumper mount. It sits in there. It's also the servo mount for the steering servo, because this one I have set up with a track bar or pan hard bar or track rod, wherever in the world you're from and whatever it's called. I'll show you later. Steering servos, I'm not overly particular on which ones I wanna run. Kinda just go with whatever seems good. Seems decent quality. This one is a 35 kilogram if you run it at the proper voltage, which that's that's the main thing you have to look for on these things. It says 35 kilograms, but that's at 7.4 volts. Now, if you're running it on a six volt system, that's not gonna be its full strength. So luckily with the Spectrum stuff, if you have the program card, you're able to change it, which the program card is super cheap. I'll put that down in the description below if I have been able to put anything, links to any of this in the description below, that'll be down there as well. Make sure if you want to do water stuff, get waterproof, metal gears, all that fun stuff, but it's been a great servo. I don't even remember the name. What is it? Flash Hobby. It's very small. So that's what that one is. I'll put a link in the description as well. So if you want that one, this one's been really good. Good strength, good speed. Now I'll put this all together and we'll come back. There is the motor, transmission, and the steering servo all mounted up. Shock towers mount to the transmission mount. I had to modify mine a little bit just because I chose to run frame mounted ser steering servo. And what that means is that obviously the servo steering servo is mounted on the frame. Whereas as you saw with this one, the steering servo is mounted on the axle. So the issue I was having with this one was not having it mounted on the axle. The motor was hitting the pitman arm or the steering arm, whatever you want to call it. So I just took some brackets, modified them a bit, got the motor sitting up higher. We'll get past the electronics so that everybody will stop arguing or telling me that I'm wrong because I'm not using the right stuff. Don't care. This stuff is the right stuff for me. Works really well. So now we'll get front axle mounted up onto there with the coilovers. Right now is actually a perfect opportunity to sh show why you need a track bar for the front when you're running a three link as opposed to a triangulated four link. Now with the triangulated four link, as you see, you can't move the axle side to side. Why that happens, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's because of math. So that's all mathed up and that won't move. Now, as you see right here, this can move all over the place. You don't want that because obviously it's just going to fall all over the place. 
So if you're not running a triangulated math link, then you want to run the trackbar. Now we have that trackbar mounted, and now that axle doesn't move anywhere. It'll go up and down, but not side to side. So that's exactly what that bar is for. Now, if you want to run a triangulated math link to like the rear, you can on the front, but then you would want to run a steering servo mounted on the axle, because if you don't, when the axle travels like this, it's going to pull on your steering and it's going to turn it. And you don't really want that. You want to be able to have full control of your turning the whole time when you're driving. So I'll hook up this steering rod, then we'll move on to the next part. As incorrect as I am on most of this stuff, one thing I did do correct when I put this one together is, as you can see, as the axle travels, pan hard bar, track bar, whatever you want to call it, moves at the same time as the steering. And that's what you want to avoid bump steer for all the racing that you're going to do with a rock crawler. And there it is. Everything put back together. And it moves. And I actually tightened the bolts. But that's just a note to everybody. Probably maybe more frequent than once every eight months, you should do a nut and bolt check on these things. So let's get the transfer case in. And there's the transfer case mounted up on the skip plate. The mounting bolts right there. One good thing about these transfer cases that come with, sorry, with that transmission is that you have that input right there from the transmission. You have that one, or you have this one right here. This one is more of a slow ratio than this one. So if you wanted to go a little bit faster or get a little bit more wheel speed, just unbolt the transfer case, turn it around, connect that drive shaft from the transmission to that one. And that'll give you a little bit more speed. These ones right here in line, those go down to the axles. So the next step for me is to put the drive lines on. And yes, they are rusty. It's the joys of taking this stuff in water. So I'll probably have to get new ones eventually, but I sprayed them with WD-40, so they work again. Or it's not that they didn't work, but they work better. One thing to note, that little axle pin is on each end of each drive shaft, including that one. Put Loctite on them. They will back out after a little bit of time or even a lot of time, but they will back out. So definitely put Loctite on these. They need it. Blue Loctite, not red unless you're going full send. Another thing real quick before I do the drive shafts is before you go online and order drive shafts, you want to have whatever transmission or transfer case that you're running. You want to have that in and whichever axles you're going to run with your wheelbase that you're going to run. The reason for that is all of these online are different lengths. So you want to have basically as this sits right here, you don't need to have any of your electronics, anything like that to measure for the drive shafts. But you measure from the center of the output to the pinion. You wanna measure that, whatever that length is, either it's length fully extended or it's length fully compressed, you want your measurement to be in between that. So when you're building a custom build like this, you wanna hold off on the drive shafts until you have your frame essentially at this part minus that. So you just need all that stuff, then you'll know your drive line lengths, very important. All right, so next are the sliders. These are a personal choice. You can run them, you can not run them. It does give me a place to mount all my electronics, well, the power switch and the receiver. So I put it on there, gave me something to protect the body too. These, once again, just, they were bought. Plenty of adjustment for different bodies, however you wanna do it. This does bolt straight up to the frame. These bolts help hold that center skid plate in there too, so. You can run these, you can not run them, but they make all sorts of different styles, lengths, everything like that for whatever body you want to run. And then you have adjustability to get it exactly where you want it. And there we are. Got the electronics mounted down, just double-sided tape. I always like to put the power switch somewhere where I can reach it when it's on, when the body's on it that I can just reach in. And it's very hard to do with the camera, but you know what I mean. I like to, just be able to turn it off without having to take the body off. So I always put it somewhere relatively easily accessible. Right there, it's just through the fender. But that is how you piece one of these together. Then it just comes down to what tires you want to run, the body that you're going to run, and you know what? You choose 
whatever you want to run because that's what really matters. As long as it's your RC and you're having fun with it, doesn't matter what body you're going to run. You can run a Toyota, Jeep, that thing, another Jeep. There's tons of body options out there. Lots of electronics as well. I don't think we'll ever show that without the body on it again. That was my first one, so give me a break. But for the people who don't have welders, I hope this really helped. All right, so I'll finish this one up off camera, just zip tying all the wires up. Don't really need to show you guys how to zip tie. I have faith in everybody knows how to play with zip ties. They're a lot of fun. So this is just one example of buying all the parts to piece it together and you can make exactly what you want. And you don't have to stick with just something like this. You can go keep it relatively mild, just like this one, or you can go a little crazy and do like this one, which is four wheel steer, big old honking axles, which are the same as what's on that one, just different color. So this one is four wheel steer, but same frame, same shock towers, different transmission than that one. Like I said, that's a front mount. This is a center mount. This was all pieced together as well. I made a few parts, but I really didn't need to because you can pick up all the parts. So you can go as crazy as something like that. Or our next project, you can go really crazy. But this one, same frame rails, except I made all these cross braces because I'm trying to do something a little different. I'm trying to do adjustable suspension. So that's going to be the next project that I'm going to be getting on. But that frame is the same as those two right there. So between those three, except that one is not pieced together as much as fabricating, but these two right here, you can piece them together and you can do all sorts of different variations and you can make it exactly how you want. So ones like these are a lot more work because you have to piece them together. You got to buy all the parts, try to find the right combination of what you want to do, but you do get the satisfaction of saying, I built it. You know, I built it by putting it together, but you didn't just go out and buy it. You can get all the upgraded parts. That's my biggest thing is everything is metal upgraded parts on these. So that's why I like these ones. But this one, I really hope everybody enjoyed, especially for the people that don't have welders, aren't able to build their own frames or roll cages, stuff like that. This was to show you guys that you can piece one together and still have a fully custom build. So from Waffles RC, hope everybody has a great evening, day, whatever it may be. And we'll see you on the next one when we get started on that. And if you're still here, leave in the comments that that's going to be a rock crawling Escalade. I'd love to see if anybody actually watches all the way to the end. We'll see you on the next one, guys.